Greetings apostles for white well-being, the proud, the strong, the few, and the growing. Behind me there is a Jewish memorial here in Bratislava, and I've been seeing lots of Jews come to this memorial. Pause this. Okay, folks, had to catch the bus there, get somewhere a little more private here. Um, and uh, today just felt like wearing this out and about. And um, we can never do enough of this, as we all know. Um, but I just happened to be uh, walking past this Jewish memorial and been seeing Jews there for the past few days, at least, going to visit there with hats and all. And I just decided, ah, as luck would have it, walking right by a group of them, I got on this little baby. So just decided I would give them a really good look at that. Stopped, said hello, said, hey, just want to let you know that whites aren't going to be K-I-L-L-E-D, M-U-R-D-E-R-E-D, G-E-N-O-C-I-D-E-D, -E -E or erased anymore by your kind or anyone else. Because we don't have guilt anymore. Check it out. Let's read it together. No white guilt. So that's what I just said to some of those hats. And uh, I don't know if they spoke much English. Uh, they didn't quite seem to understand what I was saying. Maybe, maybe they don't. I don't know how much you know your your average J E W knows about the white erasure that's going on, largely at the hands of them. Um, I don't know. Maybe they didn't know too much. Um, maybe they did. Don't know. Um, maybe they were just your everyday variety of them. But nonetheless, we know what that. But that group, by and large, has inflicted upon white people. So, um, just decided that was a good opportunity to tell some people, hey, it, those days are over. Why? Because we don't have guilt anymore. So I just stood there, let them see it as they were sitting in their car. Said, those days are over, folks. White people aren't having it anymore. because we don't have guilt anymore. Therefore, we're not letting ourselves be victimized anymore. This is the key. Um, and, uh, you know, so boldness, these bold acts are uh, very needed, as, as I think, as you all know. Um, also today, I took one of Elaine Sabatino's rocks, which I haven't done in a while and put it out here at the university, a lot of forest land, perfect for it. So put one, the first one at the university here in Bratislava, uh, Komenskejo, as they call it. And uh, somebody's gonna see it. And there are lots of whites. Um, and, uh, another, and, and what I will say, <laughs> It's been a little slow here for me, as uh, some of you know. I'm trying to find a plan B, not able to study here because of documentation issues. But, um, so I've been kind of, kind of a little bit slow, but um, making a video yet again, trying to keep things going for white well-being, the greatest cause on God's green earth now, as we know. Um, and, uh, one thing I wanted to point out, just the other day I noticed there's a group of darkies straight from Africa that arrived here. So they're coming, they're trickling in here, folks. In this place, I've come to the conclusion is just is going downhill fast. They do still have a mostly white society, but mark my words, it won't be that way in the next couple decades. Uh, going on this path. They're on a very bad path. They're on a path kind of just like the West. A lot of the same type of trends. Um, girls do not dress properly here. Um, it's not full-blown feminism as like in the West, but it's, you know, it's sort of <laughs> some aspects of that. Um, 
and uh, the media, as I've said, is, is there's a lot of toxicity in that. And so I've seen more and more of it, and I would say it's going downhill fast here in Slovakia, folks. It is just, um, just heading, heading uh, too far down that road, in my opinion. And uh, they still have their people, so that's where they still have a chance, but they're on the wrong path right now. And uh, with culture, with losing their traditions, with you know, embracing these anti-white ideas like like non-whites are just all cool somehow and should always be welcomed in and you know other anti-white toxins those things are here some of them are more advanced than others and the the one thing they do have which is their white population is starting to fade uh so i'm seeing them trickle in here and that's what happens when a society is weak, when they start giving away their traditions, their culture, and they start, the women start dressing very scantily, and uh, and all the other toxins of, of media and so forth, anti-whiteism creep in, it takes a little bit, but this will weaken a society enough that, hey, when, when, when the migrants do start flowing in, they're gonna have no defense for it. And I can already see they've got they've got lots of propaganda here. Um, again, not as much as the West, but they do have the propaganda that, hey, you know, all colors are beautiful, and black is the in fashion thing. I've seen stuff like that uh, around here. So dangerous, dangerous path. And if they don't start understanding that whites need to stick up for themselves, for God's sakes, with messages like no white guilt, white well-being start recognizing that we are a race we are a group of people we need to defend ourselves as that group as whites so if they don't recognize that here which they don't seem to be then it will just keep on eroding and eroding until it's just squalor like it is in in the west so it's spreading it, you know it's it's like the old communism spread they say well now instead of going east to west it's going west to east and slovakia is not far enough east to be to be free from it so these people are mostly white still but they're just they're very weak they're sitting ducks um if they were to announce that slovakia was opened up for refugees from whatever country they would have not much defense in my opinion ideologically because the ideological subversion has been basically done here and i didn't realize that but um not a good situation here um but now if these people were to get the message of white well-being and start going free from the anti-white narrative they could defend because they still have enough of their people here they still have the majority so like in america if whites were to have woken up back in the 60s it would have been a lot better obviously with a with a much greater percentage majority of whites so this is where um, it's at least as valuable to do it in a mostly white society because if they start working for their own white well-being, well-being, they are a serious force being the majority. So as important as any other place to, uh, to get the message to any white on the face of the earth. Um, so it's happening, folks. It's, uh, it's you know... Little by little, these things are starting to break down. And um, <laughs> they're still in luxury mode of having their people and just frolicking with these fan fanciful ideas, just like America did back in the 60s and so forth. Well, look what happened to America. So these people will not be frolicking with their ideas if the few darkies turns into boatloads of darkies and they really put their imprint on here and the local people start getting displaced then it won't be so the ideas won't sound so nice anymore um but i'm doing all i can we're all doing all we can and um all my love of course to the great wilhelmina and matthew bayer i love you so much blue ninja too i hope you're both doing well I know there's hard times over there for both of you. 
and miss you always thinking about you brad c the blue ninja three also and uh all my love respect appreciation admiration and support to each and every one out there um and uh raymond foster i want to highlight i'll see if i can maybe keep this going i'm going to pause it here head back in okay folks back in the room now and i just wanted to finish up with a couple more points um that i've been wanting to make by the great none other than raymond foster the sir knight himself made some fantastic videos lately um that i want to just briefly comment on and show my old school way here real quick let's hear it from the man himself this one was called the racial slur colonization now i wouldn't use some of the same wording here um i wouldn't use the r word uh, at all or as little as possible personally but i think he's doing it with quotations you could say and so forth and Cannot, cannot doubt or question the man, Raymond Foster. He's undoubtedly doing just leaps and bounds of good for white people. And, uh, and he knows what's up. So just thousand percent support to Sir Raymond as always. And uh, he's a juggernaut for our people and having monumental, cannot be overstated, the positive effects he's having for whites and everything he's doing over there. So I wouldn't choose some of the same wording here, but um, but he is pure and true and he is effective. So not gonna question it, just gonna, as always, fully support Raymond. And uh, he handles this fantastically. So check this out. This is about, which he puts in quotations, colonization, which is the anti-white narrative. He says racial slur, I would have called it an anti-white slur. We're just going to leave that out of the discussion here. Ultimately, Raymond just gets the point across and handles it beautifully and puts this anti-white in his place. One of his mates, one of his friends, maybe former friends. I've lost friends over this stuff, finding out that they're pretty badly anti-white. So sometimes if they're that anti-white, don't want to change, then you'll see Raymond gives him the ultimatum, hey, just stop with the anti-whiteism or we might have to just cut things off as friends. So it's just something that we have to do sometimes. Raymond does it here like a champ, a champ of champs. So always exemplary. Um, this is a post by one of his friends, maybe former friends, about this anti-white slur colonization, anti-white narrative. Raymond handles it beautifully. Listen to how he handles it. Silly meme. And it talks about colonization, okay? Any derogatory mention of colonization or colonizers, just so you're aware, is a racial slur against members of Western kind, all right? So like the N-word for non-white people but it's a racial slur for white people, okay? So this is a disgusting, dehumanizing, racial slur, okay? Being shared as a meme. And it's not even a joke, it's not even like funny, it's actually just straight up racial discrimination. Open quote. Colonization has ruined everything and there's so much we'll never get to experience because of what it's taken from us. Close quote. So again, you replace the word colonization here. It's a racial slur, so it means white people, innocent white people, in a way that dehumanizes them so that you can justify harming them and white erasure. Now, this individual is one of my mates on Facebook at the moment, but he's shared this meme, so I've told him, and that again, folk, if you see this, if, if you have a so-called friend who shares something like this, who says something like this about colonisation or colonisers, all right? Again, this is a racial slur. They're, they're bigots. They're bigots. They're disgusting human beings, all right? For saying something like this, for using colonisation 
in this manner. All right? Again, to speak ill, to speak derogatory, or in a derogatory manner against colonizers or colonization at all, to not praise it, to say, oh, these are the benefits, the goods that came from it, we're grateful, we have electricity, you know. To speak ill of it in any manner is racial discrimination against members of Western Con. And Okay, I'm going to jump forward a little bit here into what his response is. Check this out. He handles it just like we should all handle it. Discrimination. It's disgusting. Racial discrimination is disgusting. Everybody deserves to be respected no matter their background, their race. And that includes white people. So that means you've got to stop using racial slurs like colonization and colonizer. And speaking about colonization in a negative fashion. It's disgusting, bigoted racial discrimination against all members of Western kind. It needs to stop. And if you dare use that language around me, that disgusting racial discrimination. Okay, so I don't know if he had already read his what he wrote there, his comment or not, but uh, what he said there was something like, uh, hey, mate, buddy, um, this anti-whiteism won't stand or something like that. Delete this post or I'm going to have to delete you. And that is ultimately the bottom line, folks. He handled it perfectly. That's exactly the way we should handle anyone who wants to talk about colonization. Notice Raymond did not engage in it. He, with the person, he can have a discussion with us about it. But with an anti-white, we know what their intent is. Their intent is definitely not at all to have a reasonable discussion about it. So Raymond doesn't go back and forth with this guy and have some long discussion. He just says, it's anti-whiteism, it's ugly, delete it or I'm deleting you. That is how it should be handled, folks. Exemplary from the master himself, as always. Fantastic example of handling something from the anti-white narrative. So a lot of people, as we know, whites will always say, oh, but, but, but this and that, and they get into this, to this whole discussion about colonization. Oh, it was good. It helped these, these African countries and, and those countries and so on and so forth. And whether it's bad or good and on and on and on, and none of that matters to the anti-white. They're just going to keep on using it as an excuse to inflict harm on whites. So... There is no point, as we know, discussing it. Raymond does the correct thing, rather. He doesn't enter the anti-white narrative at all, which is all that stuff about colonization is all anti-white narrative. Every single discussion point with an anti-white about it is anti-white narrative when you're talking to an anti-white. So he doesn't even engage. He doesn't enter that narrative. He just says, you're anti-white, calls it out. That's the important thing. He calls that what it is, anti-whiteism. So when people say, oh, whites are bad because they colonized, and a lot of whites will fall into this trap. No, we're not. Colonization wasn't so bad, blah, blah, blah. It was good, blah, blah, blah. No, wrong. It is anti-whiteism, disguised. We know what it is. Raymond called it out accurately, just said, that's anti-whiteism, bro. Um, just be gone with that. Take that elsewhere. And uh, that's how it should be handled. No discussion, just it's anti-white. Not going to happen in my presence. And please stop doing that altogether. It's nasty anti-whiteism. So that is the way to handle that stuff. Anyone that talks about colonization, no discussion at all about that word. Just you're anti-white. That's just horrible, horrid, anti-white talk. I'm disgusted that you would say such a thing, that you would spew such anti-whiteism. Please just repent and go free of that, of, of your anti-white ways. Please turn that around. If you don't, then, then uh, be gone. Just like Raymond did. Delete this post, delete this anti-whiteism, or I'm deleting you. If that guy didn't delete the anti-whiteism, Raymond was going to do it by deleting him. So we let him know what it is. We give them a chance to turn it around if they want to. If they don't, then we say, uh, see you later. 
<clears throat> and be gone. Um, so that's the important thing about stuff like that. It is just pure anti-whiteism. That's all it is, as we know. It's a good example of the anti-white narrative. There's nothing serious about any of the things they're saying when bringing up points like that. Um, and as we all know, we should never engage it. Just simply say it's just anti-whiteism. It's anti-white talk. And you must be an anti-white. Turn that around. <laughs> Uh, and if they don't, then you're out of there. Um, fantastic by Raymond. Now, Raymond's been on fire lately. He made another video, which I'm, I queued up here real quick. This one is about um, the another thing that anti-whites say, that, that, that the white race doesn't exist or white culture doesn't exist um, and, and stuff like that. So this is about that sort of thing. R race is a social construct. This is an anti-white mean pathogen. Raymond talks about it beautifully here. Let's, let's hear a little bit of this. Any whites will try to excuse and deny the suffering of the white race, members of Western kind, and our ethnic cleansing via mass immigration of non-white populations into Western nations. One of the classic ways that they'll try to excuse this and cover this up is by saying and spreading the anti-white meme pathogen and lie that race is a social construct. They'll try to say that, oh, well, whites aren't suffering. Whites aren't being replaced in their own homelands, facing ethnic cleansing. Why? Not because it's not happening. It's definitely happening, and they agree, they promote it, they push it. They call it multiculturalism, they call it diversity, they say it's really good. The reason it's not happening and you can't complain about it, white man, is because race is a social construct, so you don't actually exist. So you're going to be ethnically cleansed via mass immigration, but it's okay because... don't actually exist so if you complain you're going to be called a conspiracy theorist and a racist for just simply speaking about your own people's ethnic cleansing via mass immigration white erasure the crime of genocide so just for speaking about the suffering okay folks i'd like to show more of that um but i'm running low on time it's going to spill over into a second video here as my uh as i tend to be lengthy so basically my commentary on that uh is this this whole idea that that, that anti-whites put out that race is a social construct this is another version in my opinion of race doesn't exist and all of this type of stuff when anti-whites say that they're saying it to who they're saying it to white people now the purpose of this as i've talked about before this is to keep whites in the dark this is to keep fooling white people. This is to keep punking white people. So this, this is preventing whites from seeing what's going on. The white erasure, the white genocide, as he puts it um, accurately, and keep whites from defending thus. If whites don't see it, they can't defend. So this is just an attempt to say, no, it's, it's not really happening white folks and obviously it is happening but they're just trying to keep whites from realizing that it's happening why because this is obviously the key step in defending whites have to realize it's happening they have to recognize we have to recognize ourselves as a group and that we are being genocided erased in order for us to defend ourselves so this is just prevention of whites from defending via preventing the first step in that process, which which is recognizing the problem. They're just saying, no, 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 the problem is not existing. No, 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 don't do anything about it. It's not there. Our house is being bulldozed. 
but they're saying, no, 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 your house is fine. Nothing's going on. Just, just go to work, carry on with your life. Never mind your house is, you know, our house is on fire. But they're saying, no, 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 it's not. That's just your imagination. Everything's fine. So it's just obvious, bold-faced line. They're just saying, no, it's not. Don't worry about it. Just, it's just your imagination. Just don't do anything about it. That's what they're saying. They just want to keep whites in the dark. You're not being robbed as they're plundering you every which way imaginable. It's just the most obvious silly lie that could be told. And, and it's embarrassing that so many whites believe this being told that we're not being robbed, that we're not being erased as we're being looted horrendously and uh, and genocided horrendously. So they're just saying, no, no, no. Just They just want us to stay in the dark about it. That's all that stuff is. It's not about race. Race is a social, social construct, i.e. race is not really real. Uh, the one human race, which Raymond also talks about there too, all that stuff. Race is just imaginary. All that stuff is bull honky, just only directed at whites for the sole purpose of fooling whites, for keeping whites in the dark, for just keeping whites from seeing that it's happening. They're just saying, look the other way. Don't, don't look at it. Just, just forget about the, the genocide and the erasure that's going on. Just, just forget about it. That's all that that boils down to, all that kind of stuff. So we had an example of talking about the anti-white narrative of colonization. That's just pure anti-whiteism. And then we have this race as a social construct. It's not about race, the human race, on and on and on, all just to keep whites in the dark so they can keep punking us. That is a punk most likely a vicious, well-aware anti-white. So now, the last, the point I want to make about both of these things, the first thing, especially colonization, when someone, like a white person, I presume, one of Raymond Foster's friends or former friends, uh, talking about the anti-white narrative colonization, where does that come from? Why do a lot of whites say this? Well, it comes from right here on my shirt, white guilt. It, that comes from white guilt. That's the root of that. That is why whites will say, oh my gosh, we're so bad, we colonized. It's white guilt. That's where that comes from. So you get rid of the white guilt. And then that anti-white narrative fades away too. And people will not spew out, especially whites, will not spew out these lies, which are the anti-white narrative. That anti-white narrative baloney, falsity, cannot exist with white pride. Proud white people don't go around saying, oh my gosh, we're so bad because we colonized. Proud white people say, those countries should thank us. <laughs> and aside from all of that, every race should be proud of themselves, including us. Dang right I am, and we are too. That's what a white pride person says. There's no, it, it, there's no room for the anti-white narrative with white pride. So the, the anti-white narrative feeds off of white guilt. It can only exist with white guilt. The white guilt is the fuel for the anti-white narrative. It's what allows people to be brain. It's like a drug that warps people's brains and they will say all this nonsense. It doesn't make any sense. It comes from white guilt. White guilt is the poisoning mind-altering drug. Erase the drug, cleanse the body and mind and soul, and the anti-white narrative goes away as well. And we restore our white well-being. Um, white pride and white positivity. So that's just white guilt. Now the, the social construct of race, the it's not about race stuff, that's more likely, I would say, to be a vicious anti-white that just wants to keep punking whites. No, 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 whites don't. Don't, don't, don't pay attention to, to the fact that you're being robbed blind. Just keep turning the other cheek and let us keep stealing, plundering, and, and erasing your people. That's most likely what that 
comes from, I think, just vicious and raw anti-whiteism. It could, though, also come from white guilt if it's coming from a white person. Just being super brainwashed, super fooled beyond belief, a white that is just believing in, oh, no, we're not being erased. We're not being robbed, plundered. Just It's not happening as it's just happening in front of everyone's eyes, obviously. This is someone who's brainwashed beyond belief. They cannot recognize reality anymore. So it's either a very significantly white-guilted, brainwashed, white, or a vicious, non-white, anti-white. Um, or vice versa, or any combination of the two. Um, so ultimately, um, no white guilt is the answer. Getting rid of the fuel, the white guilt, the, uh, for anti, the anti-white narrative, anti-whiteism, and rather replenishing ourselves with real fuel, the antidote, white pride, and white positivity and white well-being all the way. Because just like I said to those hats tonight, the anti-white narrative is over. Why? Because white guilt is over. That's what allowed it all. So the process has begun, as I told him and them tonight, that we are coming back and we're on the rise once again. Hallelujah and amen. I love y'all. God bless each and every one. Stay strong, stay white, free, white, positive, white, protective, and white, proud, white, resilient, white, resistant, and white, defiant. Um, and one last thing to close out here. Speaking about fighting, little illustration I always love as the Blue Ninja. To all the other Blue Ninjas out there, symbolic of what we're doing now and what we're not doing and what we're not doing is taking any more crap what we are doing is fighting again in the correct way defending ourselves once again metaphorically the analogy i like little mk2 blue ninja sub-zero style shall have the victory.